All right. Looks like we are live. We are rolling. Hey, how are you doing, everybody? My name is Junior, and I would like to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital. Um, today's date is Monday, August the 15th, and we've got a wonderful show for you guys here today. Uh, again, we're just going to be talking about all of the new digital technology that is taking over our physical reality. Uh, and the first thing that we have is amusement parks are now getting into virtual reality uh, to make the experience even bigger. Um, we've got a wine company who is actually bringing augmented reality um, to their wine bottles. We also have a um, movie who is actually getting into, well, I guess the movie production company is actually getting into augmented reality as well. Um, and then we'll kind of go deeper into the movie side because we'll see how um, all of this new technology is taking over the movie creation scene. And today is Monday, so of course we have Merchandise Monday, so I'll be sharing with you guys a product of this week in which I was found a little bit interesting, so I figured you guys might as well. Um, so without further ado, stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. All right, so as I mentioned, the first thing off the block is a amusement park in Pennsylvania in the United States um, I believe the city is called the Poconos and they actually have an amusement park there who is taking a water slide and making it more immersive so I'm gonna play this video here they'll explain everything about it um, it's only like a minute minute and a half or something like that then we'll jump back into it Resorts in the Poconos is now home to the country's first virtual reality water slide. So what's it like? Our business reporter Justin Backover checked it out. You can now fly with aliens or fight fire-breathing dragons from Kalahari Resorts in the Poconos. America's largest indoor water park now has the country's first and only virtual reality water slide, partnering with San Francisco-based Ballast VR to develop the project. We specifically focus on virtual reality for water parks and resorts. Stephen Greenwood co-found Ballast Technologies in 2017. It took more than a year to develop with the resort, housed in a waterproof casing that fits over your head, sensors sync up the slide and the headset. We're currently in 15 different countries at about 40 different locations there are three experiences to choose from there's a space experience where you're navigating the galaxies and following an alien craft through meteors there's a safari with cheetahs and rhinos and giraffes and there's a dragon experience where you go through a medieval castle and battle a fire breathing dragon of course i had to give it a try myself i chose the safari that was quite the experience at first, I was skeptical, but it's very realistic. Maybe a little too realistic. I was just a terrible. The whole thing is a lot of fun. It's a very unexpected combination. And most likely just the beginning of a new way we'll experience amusement parks. We come from the Silicon Valley background, and when you apply that sort of mindset to the space of entertainment and the resort atmosphere, I think some really magical stuff can happen. Justin back over 69 news. All right. So what do you guys think about that? I think it's actually pretty cool. I think it's pretty amazing. In fact, uh, I'm surprised the guy said he, they are in like 15 different countries. Um, that was the first one in the United States. So I was like, all right, where have they all been at? Uh, the video was also in 2021. So, I mean, it's 2022 now. They may be in more amusement parks around the country uh, and more countries around the world as well as like that. So, um, yeah, you guys definitely check that out. Anybody in Pennsylvania who has experienced it, definitely do hit up the comments. Let me know how it is. Uh, I myself would love to actually go check that out. Maybe next time uh, I take a road trip, I have to uh, visit that place and then, um, you know, try it out and everything there. Um, but yeah, I think it's actually pretty amazing. The whole immersive experience, like the guy said, once you bring in some of that technology into entertainment, that whole immersive experience, um, brings a whole new wow factor that has never been seen before. Um, like I said, going through a jungle while going down a water slide actually felt a bit realistic. So, um, yeah, it's something I would definitely want to try out. Um, the next thing that we have up here now is a company called... 
Chronic Cellars. And Chronic Cellars is a wine company. Um, looks like they have a special character. I forget what the character was called as well. I'll find that here shortly. But um, they're, they're just a wine company. If you are a wine drinker, uh, looks like they have a nice red blend of wine. I'm not sure if they have like any white wine or anything. But it's not about the wine. It's about this tab up here at the top that says Augmented Reality. Um, so that's just a quick tidbit there also for everybody who has a business. You're going to want to start putting in the Augmented Reality tab on your uh, or a Virtual Reality tab on your um, on your website. Uh, because if you're not implementing some sort of like digital aspect to your business, um, you're really falling behind on the curve. This company is doing a really good job of that by actually placing this on here. And as you can see here, basically what you do once you buy the bottle, um, they're going to have a QR code on a little hang tag on there as well. And then once you do that, you can turn yourself into, you get this filter basically, um, I believe the filter's on a separate app. I'm not sure if this is web VR. I have to read this again. Um, basically, this character here, I think they said Purple Paradise. That's his name. Um, Purple Paradise, they have that there as well. Um, and then also have a game. I think they have three things. They have a game, they have the filter, and then they also have a AR experience. So let me just double check this here. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to double check and see, uh, cause there was one thing I saw that was like, all right, they have the filter, which you can take the selfie of yourself as that character and stuff like that posted everywhere that you want to. Um, I have a YouTube video and also a Twitter post. Let's actually, let's check out the Twitter post real quick. Um, okay. So this is the game. So it's actually pretty cool. So, you know, when people go out, they drink, they have fun, they like to play games. Well, this company is actually building in the game right there in the bottle. And it's nice because everybody has cell phones nowadays. So now all you have to do is just go ahead and play that, whip up your phone, play that game and have fun with their bottle. So it's like a dice game, it looks like. They said I was going to do this. Okay, redemption round. Let's roll. Let's drop the wine snobbery. Spill a time to proudly give stuffy wine etiquette. So, yeah, so there's that, and then also the YouTube video. It's only about 36 seconds long. Okay, yeah, so here, this is the filter. So you scan the barcode, or QR code, I should say. It comes up. Yes, yeah, so this is web VR. And you can become that purple paradise guy, or skeleton. It has face tracking, animations. Take a photo, video, share it on social media. So yeah, so that there is again, just a whole new wave of what the future has to offer, implementing all of this augmented reality, um, virtual reality into, you know, our physical worlds. Last week, the word of the week was fidgetal. Um, you're going, you're going to see a whole lot more of this, um, basically just trickle in little by little as different companies start to figure out, okay, how can we use this to basically monetize our business even more? Turning yourself into a character and just sharing it for completely free is going to bring that company a whole lot of money. And then once you share it, they're gonna find out what the wine is, then it's gonna learn that they can play the game with the wine, they're gonna download the game, so on and so forth. Maybe one day they actually develop a full on game that you can download on your mobile device. Um, and you can keep a customer, you know, way after they get done drinking your wine. So, um, in my opinion, it, it's it's going to definitely take off uh, very, very soon. All right. So the next thing that we have here today, again, today is Merchandise Monday. So 
for the merchandise of this week, we have keyboards. And yes, they are keyboards that you could buy for your computer. But these keyboards, keyboards are actually pretty, pretty special. They are uh, mechanical for one, uh, and they're customizable. I'm not 100% sure. I have to look a little bit into it. They don't have much on their website, but they have a big fan base. This is website is called uh, kbdfans.com. Uh, it looks like there's a My Shopify store, but um, they have a big fan base. And basically, what you can do is customize each and every single aspect of your keyboard. You can add lights to it. You can change the uh, different screens on it. A screen, sorry. You can change the different caps on it and stuff like that. Um, to my understanding, this is a really big thing. People are switching out a lot of their keyboards for these KBD keyboards, um, just for the custom customization aspect of it. And uh, I had a brought up this link here as well, so you guys can kind of see what some people have been doing. And the crazy part about this is that I went on YouTube. I was like, all right, so how exactly are they doing this? And all of the descriptions that came up on YouTube, people are saying, I was like, oh yeah, check out my $400 keyboard, my $500 keyboard, $850 keyboard, $1,000 keyboard. I'm just like, that's just ridiculous. Why are people paying that much? It's one of those things where if you don't have it, and people start talking about it like that, you're gonna wanna get it just so you can figure out like, okay, is it worth the money or is it just all hype? And if, am I missing out or, <laughs> or did I, did I, did I, you know, uh, did I choose wisely not to grab one of these, but you guys can kind of see the different keyboards here again, full customization, um, lights, L RGB lights, led lights and all that stuff. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this is I'm a type of person. I like the, um, uh, what's it called? Most of the ones I see don't have the uh, numpad on the right hand side of the keyboard. I think this one right here just might. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so like this side over here, this little numpad keyboard, I like using that. Most of the ones I see do not have that. They might have something like this. I can't really tell if that is one or not. Let's look at this view. Oh, it's so small. I think this is, yeah, so this would be one. So yeah, over here on the right-hand side, they just have the numpad and whatnot. So most of the ones I see, they don't technically have those. I guess, I mean, it might just be the lesser expensive one or people just don't use that one. Oh, this one's pretty cool. It's like a dragon face on there. Now, you know, something like that, that's 144 bucks just for the, um, um, the caps themselves, it looks like. So, I mean, I could really see how you can get into hundreds of thousands hundreds or even maybe thousands of dollars just on the keyboard alone um but I, i'll i'll stick with <laughs> i'll stick with my basic i think i have like a logitech keyboard it's mechanical um so yeah so you guys can kind of see oh this one's pretty cool and again i'm just going to show everybody you know what they look like you know the customizations that other people have been doing just so you can kind of get a feel of <laughs> just so you guys can kind of get a feel of you know what the uh, the full scope of it is I mean I don't even want to say full scope because you know there's probably stuff on here that people have not even thought to do yet that you yourself might actually do um, take for example uh, I don't know like this one here could be like the old Nintendo or something like this could be like the old Nintendo keyboard where it's just like you know gray buttons red some places white buttons some places you know Yeah. So again, website is kbdfans.myshopify.com. Um, they got a bunch of different products on there. They have, um, you know, different prices for everything, keyboard categories there, whichever one that you choose. You have to do a lot of research to figure out what's the difference between each one of those. Uh, I myself have no clue. I haven't dove too deep into this myself. Um, PTB, I believe PB, PBT, um, is just a the, the different keycaps and stuff like that that you can get. Yeah, I think those are just the keycaps. Um, so yeah, so definitely check those out if you're in the market of getting a new computer, or if you're in the market of upgrading computer, or if you're just in the market of being cool and hanging, you know, with the uh, with the cool kids as they say, and getting yourself a new keyboard. 
uh, for like a thousand bucks. I, again, myself, I don't need to be, <laughs> be that cool or whatever. So uh, I think I'll pass on it right now. But um, if I ever I, like actually look into it and see the major benefits of it and actually having one, I think I would actually get one. Again, I like my customizations. I have a unique style myself. Um, so I would not mind at all actually getting into one of those. Um, or hey, think about it. You can just make it into a hobby. You can actually like tell people you make them buy all their products or whatever and then just put them together for other people because some people are not mechanically inclined to actually you know put together a keyboard uh so you can then you know charge somebody a thousand dollars um buy all the parts for like 500 and you just make you know double your or i guess hundred would that be double your profit no no, no that'll just be uh i guess one and a half times technically no yeah that would be double because you paid 500 you got your 500 back plus you got 500 extra dollars so that's double yeah um all right sorry i had a little brain fart there all right so moving forward we are going now into the movie industry and there was a movie that recently came out called um uh was a superhero it's like superheroes dc league of super pets there it is so they movie just came out i guess this is part number two um, movie just came out August 29th, every, or in August 29th, July 29th. Uh, everybody with children probably know about this here. Um, I guess, you know, children of a certain age or whatever. Um, uh, but they came out with the movie and the, um, Warner Bros. Pictures actually came out with a augmented reality, um, uh, marketing scheme for it as well. So what they end up doing, and it's a good video of this as well. What they end up doing was taking these boxes. These are Amazon boxes. I honestly have no clue what you have to order to get these specialized Amazon boxes. But what you end up doing is you scanning the barcode on it and then out pops out these cool uh, augmented reality experience uh, for your children to love and enjoy. So we have a video here. Digital launch pads. I mean, that's pretty cool because they even have the, the debris flying around and stuff like that. That's some pretty good, um, That's some pretty good effects on there. So again, it's like, you know, just something fun and creative for the kids. Nothing too spectacular, nothing too crazy. But, you know, back in the day, um, you know, people used to go to, like, uh, fast food restaurants and get those little toys and stuff like that. Um, now, we don't really go out as much, but we get stuff ordered in. So now you can take that same digital experience or same experience, bring it on to, you know, the packages that we get, scan the package, um, and then, you know, have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, that'll be a whole new take on when Christmas come rolling around and then everybody is ripping up the, uh, <laughs> ripping up the, uh, what's it called? The wrapping paper and stuff like that. And they just pretty much just throw it all away and just forget about it. But now we can actually use that for a specific purpose. It can be saved. It can be reused. Um, there's a lot that could be done with it once you turn it into something much more, uh, viable. Um, and kind of moving on with the same movie scenario here, we have the actual creators of movies are now saying that virtual production is going to be the new way to actually make some of these movies pop, um, bringing a whole new type of magic to the movie industry. And they are not fully deprecating green screen. So if you don't know what green screen, green screen is, first of all, the way that movies are made, it's like in a little building, but it's basically pretty much all painted in green. And then you have a actor that's in there, or actress that's in there that does all of the acting. And then what happens is that they remove that green screen. Uh, there's a whole technical aspect to that, but they remove the green screen behind them so that basically the actor is just acting out in bare space. And then they overlay that actor onto a, another background or something like that. Um, they've done that, you know, for movies like, um, let's say a shark movie or something like that, like Jaws, 
uh, Jaws was not actually really there, but they just played a video of that Jaws, you know, shark or whatever in the background while the actor was in front of a green screen and it kind of just, you know, worked itself out. Now they're making a whole lot easier and a whole lot cheaper. You don't have to build a whole setup for the Jaws character, whatever. You can just pretty much do the virtual production version of it and then have the actor kind of like act it out in real time. And another thing that they're doing is actually just putting it on the screen. So the actor, it's kind of hard to act out a movie scene like Jaws when you're not even, you look back and you don't see an actual shark, you just see a green wall or whatever. But now when you look back, you can actually see the actual shark on a big, um, uh, like say a movie screen or something like that. You can actually see the shark there and then it makes your acting a whole lot better in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so, uh, VFX of course stands for visual effects. Um, let's see, actors and props are shot in front of the screens and digitally generated content is rolling behind them. The, that gives actors a chance to see and react to what's happening on the screens. A huge leap forward from green screens, which are, well, just green with content added in post-production. So everything happens in post-production with green screen instead of more in like in real time with this new virtual production. Uh, movies like Star Trek is doing this. Movies like Avatar, The Last Airbender uh, series is doing this as well. Um, one of the biggest benefits, the, that Tim, that can make shows faster and easier to produce and also enhance collaboration between directors, cinematographers, VFX pros, and so on. And also building a digital library of virtual re environments can reduce long-term production costs. Uh, as you go from season to season, you build up this giant library of things and you can just pull in and kit bash. Um, and kit bash is just basically taking multiple smaller um, digital assets and then grouping them all together, just in case anybody doesn't know. Uh, you can kit bash though, this brand new environment from all of the pieces that you built in the years prior. Um, yeah, so it's bringing this brand new real-time technology back to the original roots when visual effects and production were working together and things were actually being shot in camera. Um, oh, so one thing also with green screen, the lighting uh, process is hard to achieve uh, for more realism. It's called complete guesswork, uh, but now... It functioned as a highly adaptable and malleable lighting source, giving him and other filmmakers a powerful new creative technique. Uh, still, he sees virtual production as a supplement, not a substitute for green screens. I don't know if this is ever going to replace anything, but I think it's a new tool. Uh, I don't know how new it is. I feel like animations and stuff like that have already been... I mean, like real live action movies, I don't think ha has um, been around a long time. But, you know, virtual movies or production... Uh, for like animated movies, Pixar, Disney, all that stuff. Uh, their movies have been, you know, using that kind of like virtual, you know, production and stuff. But uh, now it just seems like they're using it for more live action, you know, movies with real people in it. Uh, think of like Matrix, all of these action movies where cars are blowing up. Uh, Fast and Furious where they're, you know, jumping cars out of like airplanes and stuff like that. Um yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. I don't think it'll actually replace green screen either. Uh, sometimes it may be easier to do green screen, but I think it's going to bring a whole new wave of creativity um, to the point where people are going to really see the benefit of it and start using a whole lot more. Um, so I believe that is all I have here for you guys today. Thank you again, as always, for joining. Um, to anybody who has any questions, please feel free to DM me all my social media. Uh, handles are in the description below. Also, um, look at all of the links that I'm providing to all of the articles uh, to everything that I talked about in this show inside of the description as well. Um, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I would like to see uh, you guys kind of shoot out a couple of things in the comments as well, uh, just so I can kind of get some feedback on everything. And uh, yeah, if nothing else, I appreciate everyone's time. You guys have a great rest of your Monday.